What's up coffee explorers? In this video, we're checking out the Jack Daniels Whiskey Barrel Aged Coffee. Stick around and check it out. This is Jack's Looks at Life, and if you have not subscribed to Traveling Coffee Guy, what are you doing with your coffee loving life? Also, subscribe to Don't Subscribe. Thank you. Here we are, back at home. I hope you enjoyed the recent road trip series. We're actually getting ready to head off over to Dallas and maybe go on a little bit of a road trip down in the Triangle there in Texas and hit up Houston and San Antonio as well. And that's just going to be a quick little trip. Today we're checking out the Jack Daniels Whiskey Barrel Aged Coffee. Of course there's no Jack Daniels actually in the coffee once it's brewed. It's just only the flavoring of the Jack Daniels in this from what I understand is the, the coffee beans are put into a used whiskey barrel and let to sit and take on that flavor for a couple months, few months, I don't even know how long they do it. My old coffee company, Sassy's Exquisite, used to do a oak whiskey barrel aged coffee. It was a very, very tasty coffee. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do a French press of this. Already got some water heated up, got the French press here, all we got to do is get going. So the instructions on this say to put six ounces of water for every ounce of coffee and there is an ounce and a half of coffee in this little tiny bag. But we're, woo, that smells good. Wow. It was almost like opening up a candy bar, like Swiss chocolate. With a little bit of a bourbon back. Yeah, whew, that was some good stuff. Alright, so we just go ahead and put that in there. Unfortunately, this came pre-ground. I am not a fan of pre-ground coffee whatsoever, so... They're already off to a bad start with that, but then the smell of the coffee it may have changed some things. I've already got this water heated up. We'll go ahead and we'll give it a bloom. Pour the rest of this water up in here. One thing you got to do when you're doing a French press is once you put the hot water in with the coffee, you want to stir it up. See how fresh this is. See how it creamed up like that on the top? That's how you can tell if it's fresh. So now we're gonna go ahead and put the top of this back on here. Yeah, I know, it's a, it's a French press tutorial. There's a million of those on there. And then you wait for about three to four minutes and then you can have coffee. While we're doing that, we can talk about the plan for where we're going. Probably by the time this is released, I will actually be down in Texas. My plan is I'm only gonna be there for a few days. I'm going for the day before my birthday. And I'm coming back about three days later. It's just going to be a quick little trip. I'm going to rent a car. Then going to go see some graves of some of my favorite rock stars. And a, a couple of my good friends who were in the, in the music industry. And then we're going to go do some food videos. Well, there's I'm going to be going to some Mexican food. I'm probably going to do some barbecue and something else uh, along the way. I'm going to try to find some good coffee shops to go to. I'm going to go hit up two Hard Rocks. Uh, of course, those are just going to be slideshows because of the nature of what the Hard Rock is. As you might have been able to tell from my last series, I really enjoy going to Hard Rock. I have been to 36 different Hard Rocks around the world. I'm trying to get to all of them. That's the idea. That's what we're doing when we're going to be down there. We're going to go ahead and 
start out in Dallas, drive to San Antonio, maybe go check out the Alamo, and then from there we're going to drive over to Houston, and then back to Dallas. Probably just go ahead and head on back to, to Seattle. I, I think I'll have one more day left there and I'll probably go check out where JFK was assassinated and, and you know all the all this stuff that you gotta do when you go to, to Dallas. But I'm not gonna have a whole lot of time. Alright so I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a plunge. Well, I really wish you could smell the aroma of this coffee here. This is just, it almost smells like a caramel shop. Hopefully, this coffee is anywhere near as good as it smells because this, this coffee smells absolutely phenomenal. I'm using this coffee cup that I got in Reno on that last trip. Hmm. There's a lot going on there. Now the first thing that I taste is like, uh, you know when you're like making s'mores on an open fire and you, you catch the marshmallow on fire and then you eat that burnt crust of the marshmallow? That's the first sensation that I got off of that. And then you get hit with that, with the flavor of the bourbon in the background. It's definitely a dark roast. There's definitely a whole lot of smokiness to this cup of coffee. It doesn't taste anything like my old whiskey barrel aged coffee. This uh, this is more, I would say more for somebody who likes a, a nice dark roast. Mine was always a medium roast because I wanted all the flavors to come through. But this, You definitely taste that caramelization, and uh, there's that the, the, the chocolate notes, and then on the back side you get that steam train of just boom! You're getting hit with that bourbon flavor in the background. And it's a it's a really unique combination. To be honest, I'm kind of surprised about how fresh this coffee was, being that it was pre-ground, and I picked it up at the uh, cost plus world market up in Olympia, Washington, and I was expecting it to probably be stale That is not a thing. It's, it, it's some fresh coffee I think it probably still would have been better if I could have ground it myself. Yeah, this is a fairly decent cup of coffee Now, the question is, is it something that I would drink on a regular basis? Um, no. Uh, I, I wouldn't drink it on a regular basis. This is something, to me, this is kind of a gimmick coffee. Um, it's worth drinking. Definitely worth like it. This is a coffee that you buy as a gift for somebody. Go pick up a, a couple little bags and give it to somebody for a stocking stuffer at Christmas, or maybe pick up a tin and give it to them for a business gift or a birthday gift or something like that. But as for buying it to keep it on hand to drink all the time, no, I don't think I would do that personally. This little tiny bag ended up costing me, I believe, $4.99. That's a lot of money for a little bag of ground coffee where you're only gonna get a cup and you have to brew it yourself. It's good coffee, but I don't think that I would wanna drink it on a regular basis. I definitely recommend trying it at least once. I think uh, a lot of the single origin stuff that you can get from your local roaster is gonna beat this hands down every time so definitely go in find a small coffee roaster and give them the business because they deserve it jack daniels is a multi-billion dollar company they don't really need that extra coffee business from you you know maybe once in a while 
but not all the time. As always, sip exquisitely. If you found any value or entertainment in this video, I would definitely, definitely appreciate it if you were to give the video a like and maybe even subscribe to my channel and uh, share it with your friends. It would definitely help me with the algorithm. That would be awesome. Thanks.